With that in mind, let's continue right now our weather coverage as yet another round of weather making its way through eastern Iowa at this hour. And remember, Tuesday's storm brought very torrential rains, strong winds, and caused some damage to communities across our viewing area. Yeah, and Governor Reynolds tonight issuing a disaster proclamation for Bremer and Fayette counties. Storm Trek 7 reporter Diego Hernandez is back in Fayette County tonight after Governor Reynolds toured some of the hardest hit areas. Diego, tell us, how is it looking out there tonight? Well, the rain was coming down for a bit, but now it's kind of turned into a, a light drizzle, so it's not too bad, at least not yet. I'm in Orin in Fayette County, where a ton of tree damage occurred just a few days ago. If you take a look behind me, this huge tree debris pile was just from Tuesday's storm. A few Orin residents telling me they might just have to come back together and clean up again, just as they did a few days ago. Basically, we did whatever we had to do to keep everything going until we got power back. Tuesday's storm brought strong winds and left crops flattened, but less than 24 hours later, cleanup efforts made it look as if nothing ever happened. Just made sure everything was okay, and then next morning we all just got together and went back to work and started cleaning again until we got it done. Assistant Fire Chief Shane Rackamer staying up through the night, knocking on every door to check on the nearly 100 residents Orin has. They don't even think about it. They're calling or, or just showing up and saying, what can I do? Where can I go? How can I be helpful? Governor Reynolds walking through town, taking a look at what the storm left behind. Offering help to the county by connecting with organizations that assisted with last year's derecho. Hopefully maybe going down some of the same paths that they were able to do in Cedar Rapids. Just a few miles away, Wapsie Valley High School also took some hard hits. I mean, it actually tumbled like a tumbleweed, you know, across the field and it's all bent. Superintendent Dave Larson explaining what the strong winds did to the baseball field. Bleachers ended up in right field and center field and even beyond the fencing in the outfield getting ready for the next storm. They always come together, so they will do that again. And I wouldn't be surprised if this pile got a little bigger after tonight. In town, there is still a bunch of trees with limbs kind of hanging on by a thread. So if there's any storms that pass through town tonight, they might just end up on the ground. Live in Orin, Diego Hernandez, New 7 KWWL. Diego, thank you. Now, Orrin went without power for nearly 24 hours following Tuesday's storm. Fayette County Emergency Management says that power returned around 4.15 yesterday evening.